All right, so last time we kind of started talking about some fracture mechanics. And so what I want to go through today is we're going to do a little bit more fracture mechanics. And I want to sort of lay out the equations that, because a lot of you may go work for a company where you're going to be asked to you know, do some fracture designs or something. You might use some common software like Frac Pro to do it. So I'm going to sort of lay out the equations that you're solving. You know, Frac Pro is a computer tool. Uh, that it's, a, it's very common, pr Frac Pro, Frac Pro PT. And so these are solving a set of equations, but when you're, as a user, you're probably not going to know what they are, you know. So I'm going to sort of lay them out roughly as what they are just to give you some ideas. And, and then I'll sort of also talk a little bit, you know, obviously we're not going to solve them um, because it's a fairly complicated set of coupled equations. Uh, but I will, at the end, sort of mention some shortcomings of this model. It's pretty simplified. And, and therefore, you know, some sort of things to watch out for, or gotchas, or the limitations of this type of model. But it is the sort of the most common uh, in use because it is fast. You can solve these equations rather quickly versus the type of um, physics that I solve in my research. While it's very general and there's lots of complexity in there, you also need to run it on a supercomputer. <laughs> and so, you know, a lot of your small independents that are developing these shell plays are not going to have supercomputers that they access, nor the time to wait uh, a few days to get an answer, right? So um, last time we talked about strain energy release rate, and at the end, I just mentioned that it's relationship to the so-called stress intensity factor. And uh, I used a little subscript. I, I had like K1, but I never mentioned what that one was. So we'll sort of start with, this is just sort of what something you'd learn in a fracture mechanics course on the first day. So if you um, you know imagine a, a crack in a body that's being loaded like this, so straight opening of the crack faces, this is mode one. Okay, so when you when you hear us talk about mode one fracture or you see uh, either a K or a G with a subscript that's usually a capital I, that's, we're talking about mode one. So we're talking about uh, fracture in which is pure opening. And this is typically, uh, you'll typically see fracture toughness data, you know, material property data presented in terms of mode one. And that's for two reasons. It's uh, one, mode one is the easiest mode to do the experiments. Uh, fracture fracture exp uh, toughness <coughs> experiments are actually quite complicated to do and very time consuming because the first thing, uh, this is just a little bit of an aside, but you know, to do these experiments, to do a fracture toughness experiment, remember a fracture toughness uh, is a measure of a, fra of a crack's resistance to propagate. That's what it is. It's a measure of a crack's resistance to propagate. Now, there's something subtle in that definition. There has to be a crack there. Fracture toughness is a material property that's associated with a crack. So if you have a material and it doesn't have a crack in it, you can't do a material property test on it, right, uh, in terms of fracture toughness. So the first thing you have to do is put a crack in it, right? And that can be quite hard. Uh, or tr quite in, in quite hard in some cases, especially for brittle materials. Because brittle material, the crack just wants to run unstably. Uh, you know, if you initiate any tiny little flaw, it wants to just crack the thing in two. Um, for more ductile materials like metals, you can generate cracks relatively straightforward, but it's very time-consuming because you have to do it through a process of fatigue cracking. So basically, you go to the lab. Uh, and you have a little you have a little notch which introduces a stress concentration just like around a circle or something right so you have a little notch which introduces a stress concentration and then you load it mechanically uh, for a long time <laughs> so you just basically load it mechanically at a subcritical level so you don't you obviously don't want to break it in two you, you load it mechanically and over time eventually a little fatigue crack will pop in and then you can adjust the frequency at which you're loading it 
and the Steve Cat crack will grow to some length, and you can stop then, and then you can perform a fracture toughness test. So it's a very, very time-consuming process, and uh, when you can find data on fracture toughness, you, uh, many times you don't find a statistically significant amount of data. Uh, in other terms of, in, in other words of like doing repeated tests and other things, because it's to, so time consuming, you don't often do that. So mode one is what you'll most commonly <laughs> see, first of all, because it's the easiest way to do the tests. And it also it turns out that most fractures grow uh, in, in a mode one way uh, for various reasons, okay? But mode one is the dominant mode in fracture, okay? Uh, so, Mode two would be something like this. So this is a mode two fracture when it'd be the cracked faces are loaded in shear, in pure shear. Okay. And so this is sort of the secondary mode that we deal with in hydraulic fracture. Mode one is obvious. The cracked faces are being loaded, in a hydraulic fracture, the cracked faces are being loaded with fluid pressure, right? So in that, that portion of it is strictly mode one, right? Um, but we also see mode two when we induce slip, right? So when we induce slip on a natural fracture, <laughs> that induces a mode two motion and the crack can extend because of that, okay? So, and just for completeness, it's not really something we ever see in hydraulic fracturing or in geomechanics, but uh, just for completeness, a mode three fracture would be something like this, a tearing mode, okay? And so while the, you know, last time we talked about the strain energy release rate, while that uh, is a constant we can break it down and, and have it decomposed into, in terms of, so we had this relationship, um, but we can, if, there's, if it's mixed mode fracture or in general, then you'd have these other terms. And usually you'll just see this part uh, because, again, this is, you know, you typically do the tests in mode one. Uh, so if you need the relationship, if you measure G or you measure K uh, and you want to get the other one, it's typically measured from a mode one test. Therefore, uh, you'll see this type, just this first <coughs> relationship. But in general, if you have mixed mode fracture, uh, you can break it up like that. <coughs> 